Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's session, we are going to discuss the second scenario to draw the fire pump performance curves. Apart from that, we are going to discuss some of the clarifications or queries received from the viewers related to our previous session where we consider scenario 1 to draw the fire pump performance curves. So, I request you to please go through the complete video so that you will get the clear picture regarding the fire pump performance curves as per NFPA 20 guidelines. So these are the points we discussed in our earlier video and now we are going to concentrate on the clarifications related to this performance curve. We have to discuss about the clarifications before we proceed ahead with scenario 2 since these are the most important points that has to be considered while selecting the fire pump and before we move ahead we need to discuss about the manufacturer curves there are three most important points that has to be discussed number one these curves are unique for each type of pump and these are issued based on factory acceptance tests which is conducted in the factory by the manufacturers and the third point is these curves are required during the field acceptance test or site acceptance test so related to the pumps also we have two points that has to be clarified so first point is that the pump may be used for any system demand that falls on or under the pump curve when plotted with the water supply source what does it mean it means if our system demand falls under this pump curve then we can use this particular pump for example in scenario 1, we have 1025 GPM at 70 PSI, which is under this curve. So, we are, you know, selecting this fire pump. But in case our demand is about 700 GPM at 70 PSI, that also falls under this particular fire pump curve. So, we can select this pump, option A. However, an FPA 20 recommends that the system demand for capacity shall fall within 90% and 140% of the rated capacity of the pump. So these are the most important points you need to keep in mind before selecting any fire pump. So let's discuss scenario 2 to draw the fire pump performance curves. So we'll consider one example. Here it says that the water supply is from reliable water works. If you want to know what exactly is reliable water works and if you want to know the water supplies you can refer to my video on hydrant flow test procedure there you will get the clear picture regarding this particular you know concept apart from this you have the static pressure 50 psi and residual flow and pressure 1200 gpm at 35 psi and the building is served by wet pipe sprinkler system and the system demand requirement is 1100 gpm at 115 psi so we need to choose the correct fire pump there are two options first option is 1000 gpm at 85 psi with shutoff at 94 psi and overload 60 psi and option b the fire pump capacity is 750 gpm at 95 psi shutoff at 98 psi overload 76 psi I have marked all the points on graph. I will explain you in detail now. You have a flow in GPM on X axis and pressure in PSI on Y axis. We have taken the static pressure readings, residual flow and pressure reading and marked on the this particular graph. If you see here, static pressure is 50 PSI. So at zero flow, it will be 50 PSI. We have marked here and residual flow is 1200 GPM at 35 PSI. Then we joined these two points and extended this particular line. Apart from that, we have also taken the details of option A fire pump and marked here. If you see 1000 GPM at 85 PSI, the marking is here and uh, with shut off at 94 PSI and overload 1500 GPM at 60 PSI. We have joined all these points. And last, finally, the discharge from the pump outlet will be you have to uh, you know check this one you have the static pressure 50 and the shutoff head is 94 so you need to add 94 plus 
50 psi so you will get about 144 psi and here also in the same way you need to add these pressures at 1000 gpm flow you will get a value we have marked here apart from that at 1500 gpm also you can see uh, you know here you have 20 or 22 psi plus you need to add this 60 psi so it will be around 82 psi so we have joined these three points if our system demand requirement is below this particular curve we can go ahead and consider this option a fire pump so if we look at our requirement it is 1100 gpm at 115 psi so you have here 1100 gpm and 115 psi it will comes around here so i will just mark here so it will be here so this particular thing is below the discharge curve or discharge line so we can consider this particular fire pump and you can similarly verify whether this fire pump can be used or not in our case so option b you can do and take it as a case study and let me know whether this 750 gpm at 95 psi pumps can also be used based on our required system demand i hope you understand the video thank you so much once again thank you for watching my videos in next class we are going to discuss about scenario 3 to draw the fire pump performance curves if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel and share with others as well so that they can also benefit from my video series on nfpa 20